I am surrounded by a lot of equipment for this episode of the Westwood Living Podcast. Melinda Garfield is with me, and you are again your title? I'm Melinda Garfield, and I'm the Executive Director of Westwood Media Center. You're not used to sitting in the chair and, and being interviewed, I would guess, I right? I am not. I'm usually the interviewer <laughs> or the producer. <laughs> well, it's good just to get to know different people from around our town and learn a little bit more about what you do. And you know, you do a lot here at Westwood Media Center, but I would guess that there are many people who don't really understand how it works. So that's part of what this conversation is. What's the Westwood Media Center all about? Obviously, it's very accessible for people to watch, but it's also very accessible for people to benefit from. Sure. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that we are a town department, and we're not. We are a 501c3. Um, we are a nonprofit, and our funding comes from those of you in town who have cable subscriptions. If you do not subscribe to a cable service, whether that's Verizon or Comcast, um, then you, and you do watch our content on YouTube or experience any of our uh, social media content, that is all uh, that you're benefiting that uh, for free. Um, So, you know, with the service agreement that we have with the town, along with what the town um, and the cable providers have as an agreement, um, that kind of dictates, you know, what we do here. Um, so in 2017, I built this studio. Um, we are located at 15 Per Wall Street. Uh, if you don't know where that is, which is usually a mystery to most, um, we're off of Route 1, um, kind of across the street from like the Frugal Fannies or the... Sure. Um, you know, McDonald's um, in that office park, and you can step in anytime. And as a resident, you can use our facility for free. We have a uh, beautiful state of the art studio, um, which we're sitting in right now. Which by we're the sitting way. in. So right I can now. attest to the fact that it is very beautiful. I mean, you built this. I didn't know that. That's great. I did. Yeah. We, Westwood didn't have uh, anything. Um, we were when I first got the job, we were located in the basement of town hall, in one of those jail cells. <laughs> wow. Um, and yeah, we've expanded. Um, we know we were one man operation, and now we're four. So that's really exciting. We have an entire um, computer lab that is open. It has um, all Macs with um, all the Adobe Creative Suite. So you know, even if you're not into video production, you can still benefit by using our computers for. Um, Photoshop or for Illustrator and InDesign, they, we have them here. And I think that's um, something that sets us apart. There's no other computer lab in town for free that you can use all of that stuff. Um, and then, you know, we have a great meeting space. If you ever need um, a place to meet with um, committees or, or um, anybody and... What else do we have? Oh, we have the Westwood Artists. They This is the only place that they have a permanent gallery. So they come in quarterly, um, they change the artwork, and we're super excited about our event on February 8th that um, we are hosting for the Westwood Artists and Westwood Musicians, um, and it's going to be an amazing event. It's going to be right here. It's going to be right here. In this building. Yeah. Good for you. So you build the building, you got a lot of things going on in here. What do you like most about your job, your day-to-day? Oh, good question. Um, I really like being able to interact with the public. I think that's my favorite thing to do. Um, just going to all the different municipal buildings, um, you know, finding out how we could better serve each department, um, creating videos that are useful for residents, um, and trying to figure out how to make maybe some dry information a little bit more inf- in- interesting, you know, visually interesting. Um, that's what we do and there's a whole nother aspect of what you do which is the live production and some of it's probably a bit easier to produce when you're talking about a town meeting or something like that the dry stuff you're talking about (laughs) but you also do a great job getting out and covering the high school sports not every game is going to be on wmc but you're going to have a number of games which i think is fantastic because the kids get on tv they get a chance to share it with people out of town how important are those live events to your existence Yeah, um, I think that the live events, um, specifically the government meetings, are probably the biggest draw. Um, That transparency factor um, is huge. And I see it, you know, even on um, some of the Facebook groups, you'll see people sharing the link to our meetings and saying, you know, check out at 10 10 minutes and 45 seconds, so-and-so says this. Um, So it it really helps in the narration of keeping the historical perspective perspective on what's happening at these meetings um but the sports are definitely you know top viewership for us um whether they're live or not um you know they're always 
looked at and they have the most views i would say on our on our youtube playlist so what's your background how did you end up here how did you get this job where'd you come from where did you grow up good question so i came from manchester connecticut um i graduated from university of rhode island and uh, for those of you that don't know, um, at the time of my graduation, there wasn't a Harrington School of uh, Communication. So I really kind of had to make my own way. Um, I first started out in news. So um, I did the 5, 5, 36 and 11 o'clock news um, as a production assistant in Connecticut for an NBC Connecticut. For NBC 30? NBC 30. WVIT. WVIT. Oh, yes. It was pre-HD transition. Oh, tell me about it, sister. Yeah, it I know really cool. all about that. <laughs> Trust me. It was cool back then. <laughs> you manually put in tapes, you know, well, packages. I, I, we're going to get right back to where you are, but I want to tell you. So I was in Detroit 2006. It was right at that dawn of HD when everyone was making the big move to yeah. HD, and we were under the gun because just imagine this. The Tigers were making a run in the post season mm. and our push to hd was moved up a month because the people in charge said this is historic like we're gonna be hd a month from now we're gonna have all this sd footage of a world series run so we actually figured it out so i look wow. back and i'm always i'm always gonna remember that that station wxyz got to hd in 2006 october yeah. i can attest to that so i think right. it was right about that time that wvit went to um because i i think i worked there in Oh five to 06. So, yeah, it was right about that time. Uh, really interesting stuff. I think if there was a full-time position I could have rode my way in, I would have stayed in news probably. Um, but that's just not the case when you start out in production. Um, so then I moved um, up to Massachusetts, and I started to teach. Um, and I was teaching digital media in middle school in Revere, and I did that for two years. Decided I can't be a teacher for the rest of my life. I haven't accomplished my biggest dreams. Um, moved to New York City. Uh, when I was in New York City, I worked for a film finance company. We took a couple movies to Sundance, and that was an unbelievable experience. Um, and then after that, I worked for MTV. And that was kind of like the dream job mm -hmm. I always wanted. Um, and that was amazing, and I wish I could have stayed. It was freelance, and uh, then I came back here. Uh, when I got home, back to Massachusetts, in my home now, um, I started working for Powderhouse Productions. They were doing Animal Planet shows, and it was really great to do series-type work. Um, and I was more on, like, the producing end of it. Um, and then, again, with you got to figure out, do you, can you freelance for the rest of your life? And the answer is no, for me. Um, for some, yes. But for me, I wanted to know where my paycheck was coming from. And community media turns out was one of the best ways to get a full-time job um, and I've been in community media for 11 years started in Newton and got the job here seven years ago and here we are it's crazy a lot of people you would guess say hey what does it take to get on TV and what does it take to be a sportscaster and I'm, I always tell everybody like it's not about your desire to be in front of a camera and performing you have to, and I'm sure you know this as a person who's been behind the scenes as a producer, you've got to love the process. I mean, you've got to love, as crazy as it sounds, being in that edit bay and figuring out like the little minute details of how to put a story together. So in your mind, based on your experience, what is a successful story? What's a, a good way to tell a story and how do you bring that to your job now? That's a good question. Um, and I, I always feel that the art of storytelling like, isn't always the main focus when we are doing our work. Mm. I think it's more of like, well, I guess the storytelling is the content itself. But it's uh, for us, it's taking that kind of, uh, the content that you know doesn't roll off the tongue. Mm -hmm. um, some of the more uh, complex concepts within the municipality of rules and regulations. For instance, we're working on a project right now that's going to explain um, how the cost of living um, affects um, the negotiations, the bargaining agreements, the collective bargaining. And and as a citizen, you're like, well, wait, why do I have to know that? Well, it's because the budget is is very much based on this stuff. And how can you and and there's a lot of stuff now on social with the influx of social media, and everybody can can weigh in on things. You know, it helps to better understand some of these concepts that people are throwing out there. Well, why can't we just pay the teachers more? You know, why can't we just add five more firefighters? I, mm -hmm. You know, but there's budgetary restrictions, and we have to understand that as citizens who vote in town meeting. So how can somebody who uh, owns a business in Westwood, we'll start there, yeah. then we'll go to personally, how can someone who owns a business in Westwood benefit from what you offer? 
Well, we um, have been doing business spotlights. Um, recently, we are wrapping up one from BB's Bakery, um, but we have been doing them um, just as like a welcome to the community and, um, you know, our, why, why did you come here type of um, PSA. Um, but for businesses that are actually looking for uh, paid production content, we do that too. Um, we need to make alternative revenue. As you know, cable subscribers are going down. Um, and with that is our budget. Mm. So um, we are constantly coming up with ways for grants, production services, facility rental. If you have, you know, if you don't need us to do the production, but you need a space, yeah. you can rent this out. How much? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> That's right. No, that, that makes sense. That's very cool. And then personally, same mm -hmm. thing. I mean, broadly, you said there's a lot of options, but we focused on businesses. Yeah. What if? What's a good example of somebody who personally may want to do something? Well, um, I think, you know, what we've experienced um, so far has been student-based. Um, we have done and, and have held uh, numerous internships um, for students who are in middle school, high school, and college. Um, college is the best, clearly, because you're working for a goal. Um, you're usually getting credit. But certainly, we love to cultivate that that early onset of, I, I think I really like doing this stuff. Um, and, you know, coming in, creating projects for us, creating your own projects. Um, so if you are a person who has an idea, you know, come and we can help you figure out how to make that idea to come to fruition. Um, and obviously viewership, just watch. Right. It's, it's a great resource. And it's one that I think many people who live in our town may not know too much about. So if you're able to shine a light on it, like I'm trying to do here, hopefully that could be helpful to you. And how can people reach out to you and find out how to take the next step? Sure. So uh, our website is Westwood Media Center. Dot TV as in television, um, and you can contact contact us through the website. Um, and certainly, we're here to help in any way we can. Good stuff. I appreciate you taking some time to chat with me. We'll obviously stay in touch, and it's been good getting to know you over these last couple of months. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Be good.